Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video would be about deletion vectors on Delta Lake tables. So it's not only about Databricks, it's about Delta Lake tables in general. What are deletion vectors? Deletion vectors are a storage optimization feature that you can enable or disable according to your needs on Delta Lake tables. So let's say that you have disabled this feature. When you are going to delete a record from a Delta Lake table, then a new Parquet file is being generated with the updated data and under the transaction logs we have the checkpoint that refers to the latest Parquet file with the updated data. Now, if you enable the deletions vector feature on the Delta Lake table, then we are going to mark the removed records as deleted and we don't have to rewrite the whole Parquet file. That means storage optimization first and second, that means also improved query performance. Now, if you use the latest Databricks runtime version, then deletion vectors as a feature is enabled by default, otherwise you have to manually enable this feature. First, we are going to see what the documentation says about deletion vectors and then we are going to jump straight into a simple example to understand the whole concept. Ok, so let's see what the documentation says here. What are deletion vectors? Deletion vectors are a storage optimization feature you can enable on Delta Lake tables. By default, when a single row in a data file is deleted, the entire Parquet file containing the record must be rewritten. With deletion vectors enabled for the table, delete, update and merge operations, use deletion vectors to mark existing rows as removed or changed without rewriting the Parquet file. Subsequent reads on the table resolve the current table state by applying the deletions indicated by deletion vectors to the most recent table version. Databricks recommends using Databricks Runtime 14.3 and above to write tables with deletion vectors to use all optimizations. And here uh, and we have if the workspace setting for controlling auto-enabling of deletion vectors is used, then based on the op option selected for table uh, types, deletion vectors are enabled by default when you create a new table using SQL Warehouse or Databricks Runtime 14.1 or above. Deletion vectors are not enabled by default when you create materialized views or streaming tables and must be manually enabled when you create a materialized view or streaming table. So here, when you create a table, uh, you specify the table properties delta dot enable deletion vector equals true or use the alter table command and then again set the table properties to enable deletion vectors. So deletion vectors indicate changes to rows as soft deletes that logically modifying, modify existing Parquet data files in the delta lake table. These changes are applied physically when one of the following events causes the data files to be rewritten. We use the optimize command uh, on the table, auto compaction triggers a rewrite of a data file with deletion vector and this reorg table apply purge is run against the table. So let's go into our Databricks environment. So let's create a simple table here as you can see I repartition the data so we can have only one Parquet file if you have a lot of data. So here we have only three records. Maybe it's not necessary, but uh, just if you have a bigger sample of data, you can use repartition to write into a single file. And then here we use uh, format delta override save as table to this apo underscore test underscore demo table. Let's uh, create this simple table here. By default, as we said, now the deletion vector vectors uh, feature is enabled when we create a delta table. So when we run then the describe extended command, we are going to see that uh, this feature is already being enabled. Give, us, give it a second to create the table. Okay, so let's uh, describe the table and if you scroll to the bottom, you will see 
that delta dot enable deletion vectors feature is uh, enabled here now let's say that we want to disable this feature we can use the alter command table set table properties and then this uh, enable deletion vectors feature equals true so let's do that because we're going to see how is the uh, default behavior without this feature enabled now if we describe the table again and we scroll at the bottom you will see that this feature now has been disabled and now let's see what files we have for this uh, table we should have the transaction logs and one part key file right so give it a second okay so here we have this uh, tr the transaction logs and one part key file as you can see here right so if we uh, see the logs under delta underscore log here you can see we have the first json and uh, json001 so let's see what uh, each json uh, which, uh, what data we have for um, for these JSON files here so in the 000 as you can see it's the one that we created uh, that points to the parquet file we created three records with these uh, minimum and maximum values and they point to this parquet file as you can see here which is actually this one right so we point to this parquet file and then this uh, the first 001 json let's see what it has uh, probably it has to do something with the alter table command that we run uh, and yeah as you can see it's the set table properties we disabled the deletion vectors here now if we describe history of this table so let me actually describe the history of this table describe history let's see so we should have this the create table command the first one and then set table properties that's the uh, second action here that we disable the enable uh, this feature the uh, deletion vectors feature right so now let's delete one record from this table delete uh, from this table where id equals one right and see what happens now now that we have disabled the deletion vectors feature let's see what we have now and here we have a new pocket file with the updated data and you can see the size is smaller than the last one right so you can see we generated a new pocket file with the updated data now uh, if we check here the delta logs you will see we have a new json file so let's see the json file the latest json file and it's point to the latest pocky file here as you can see 179 179 and number of records is two so that points to this new pocky file with uh, two records instead of three you can also check the size and verify that this is true now let's move to the example the same example but by enable the deletion vectors feature let's see what happens when you have the deletion vectors feature enabled so we create a second table here apple underscore test underscore demo 2 right and by default as we said the deletion vectors feature is enabled as you can see here this feature is enabled let me scroll down yep here right perfect now let's describe history and we have only one version which is the creation of the table and here as 
let's see if we have any yeah we have this uh, the first JSON that points to the table right so uh, you can it is uh, this feature is already been enabled but if you uh, you want to enable it manually then you can use the alter table command and set the table properties and then set the enable deletions vector feature to true you can do that it's not necessary but you can do it so uh, the feature now is enabled let's delete one record from this table and see what happens okay now let's scroll up and let's see here that we have let's describe the history and here we have as you can see set table properties because we are on this command then we have the deletion the deletion where id equals one and then we have the optimize command which by default it's going to run because we are using the latest databricks version and here we delete as you can see the number of removed files equals zero right why and the number of deletion vectors added equals one and the reason that this happens is because we enabled the deletion vectors feature and here you can verify that by checking this matrix here where it says the deletion vectors added equals one but the number of removed files equals zero right and if we check uh, the let's let me scroll down here actually let me uh, not I check the files that we have for this table and here now this is the key difference we have this dot bin file which is the deletion vector that marks the deleted records now you can see a new a new parky file here right a new parky file as you can see with a smaller size because by default it run we run the optimize command now if you go back to the documentation and you see here you can if uh, you can manually use the optimize command but for us it runs automatically and that's why in the history you can see that uh, the optimize command run uh, after we let me check the history describe history yep here as you can see the optimize operation run automatically right and this is why then we removed the number of removed file equals one and the number of delete uh, deletion vector removed equals one as well this is what it says these changes are applied physically when one of the following events causes the data files to be rewritten one of uh, the following events is the optimize command the optimize command that uh, run automatically in our case right so this is the main difference and here we have the deletion vector that marks the deleted record so we don't have to generate a new pocket file and uh, but here the new pocket file was the new pocket file was generated because the optimize command ran after we deleted the record uh, automatically right and this is the key difference between enabling the deletion vectors feature and having it disabled now if we're going to see the transaction log so here let's see what we have here the uh, let's say let's check this transaction log which is the 002 let's see what we have here and as you can see we have the deletion vector cardinality equals one this is where we created the deletion vector and the number of records equals three again and but we point to the removed record then we run the optimize command so if we run check the data for 003 let's see what we have here and then here we point to the new updated parquet which has two records right and here we point to this 
Pocky file. Now, uh, as you can see, under this, uh, in the file system, we have right now one dot bin file and two Pocky files, right? We can use the vacuum command if we want uh, to remove the unnecessary files. And here, how can we do that? First, we have to uh, disable the retention duration check because by default it's seven days, so you cannot use the vacuum command. And right now, uh, for less than seven days, if you haven't disabled this uh, retention duration check here, and that's why let's run this one. And then use the vacuum command, use retain zero hours. And let's see what uh, we are going to have in the end after using the vacuum command and removing the unnecessary files. Give it a second to run. Okay, so let's see uh, what we get now in the file system. From here, as you can see, we have the deletion vector file and the two parquet files. Let's see what we get after the vacuum command and it's only the latest Pocky file. And here in the documentation, it says modified data might still exist in the old files. You can run the vacuum to physically delete the old files. This completion time is the timestamp you must consider for the irritation threshold for your vacuum operation to fully remove deleted files. And you can see more about vacuum command here, remove unused data files with vacuum. So this is the concept behind the deletion vectors feature and how it can be used for storage optimization and improved query performance. This is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.